I'll say, for those of you who read the many volumes that came out of the commission, I hope that you walked away at least with a few things. And these are kind of uh, irrefutable ideas of what we know about whole child development. One is that the skills, competencies, attitudes, uh, they're malleable. So we can do stuff in the settings where uh, young people uh, play, grow, learn, to change them, grow them, foster them. And we know that they are deeply tied to experience and context. What's also very helpful is that this body of evidence has pushed us away, and this is a theme that we've heard already, has pushed us away from thinking about individuals to thinking really carefully about learning settings. And not just one type of learning setting, but all the learning settings where young people grow and thrive. And the Siege Commission created this model that describes links between features and characteristics of the learning setting, uh, characteristics of students' experience in those learning settings, and then connected those to student outcomes. They're quite consistent with each other, which is great news. And it really shouldn't surprise us because you know, back in the 1970s, Yuri Bronfenbrenner was writing about ecological systems theory and making this very case for us. So here's where the challenge is. How do we connect that volume, that vast body of knowledge, to what we do? And this is where I think we need to do more work. Ideally, uh, research and practice or knowledge and action work in a cycle like this. We have a great body of evidence. We certainly have more to learn. Absolutely, that happens all the time. I think where we're struggling is in effectively translating that body of knowledge into uh, strategies and practices that are implementable, effective, and relevant um, in the world. And that happens for a variety of reasons. One reason is that we all talk about this whole world in different ways. Another reason, I think, is that uh, ideology can get in the way of implementing practices that are based on, a, on science or closely tied to an evidence base. I also think that our evidence base hasn't been rooted in practice enough. So these two worlds have operated independently, connected to each other, but independently, and as a result, not as closely connected to each other as we would like. Why have we struggled in this translation? I'm going to suggest that I think in some cases that's because we still operate with this idea of inoculation and quick fixes in our mind. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Some you might not expect to sit in this category, so forgive me. The first, early education, right? Early education, we know, is critical. It is so important, and it is great. I do lots of work in that area, as many of you do probably as well. But we have placed on the little tiny shoulders of early education the entire future and have ignored the science that tells us about developmental trajectories, that learning is on a pathway, that those experiences in all those settings pile up. And so we invest in one place and we ignore the stuff that we might need to do in the next place. In the world of whole child development, the a uh, prevailing form of practical work is often embedded in programs like these. These are social emotional learning program, one of them, designed by me, so we're all in this together. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with these, but on execution, they sometimes forget that whole child development happens in all learning settings, not just in a classroom, or not just for a few minutes each week when that lesson is being delivered. Cognition and emotion are tangled up with each other in math. They're tangled up with each other at recess, on the basketball court, in a music lesson. They're happening in all those important relationships. And we forget that when we implement programs sometimes in the field. And then we tend to latch onto, and I'm not trying to criticize grit or mindset, perfectly interesting things. <laughs> um, but we tend to latch on to ideas as quick fixes. And though that kind of thinking can push us backwards in time to the notion that what happens with individuals is what's key, and it pushes us away from thinking about experiences and the environment. I've laid out a whole lot of problems. 
Uh, but, but here's what I think. <laughs> we know these parts, we really do. We have great information about the parts, but we don't yet know the formula. And we don't know the active ingredients. These are the frontiers and these are the places to work. So in truth, it doesn't work like a vaccine. The parts go together in complex ways and those are likely to vary. If we could start by saying where are the places where things are the same, where the words actually have the same meaning, even if they're different, and where are the places where the words we use to describe this phenomena are uh, different but have the same meaning, then maybe we can build some connection in the field. We did a project that actually uh, took on the task of coding and then aligning all of the constructs in the major frameworks that dominate how we think in the whole child development field. And it's free, available online. You can go there right now, get out your computer or phone, and you just have to Google Explore SEL. I think we need to find and act on active ingredients. I think we need to do a similar kind of work that we did with frameworks with the kinds of programs that exist in the field and say, okay, what's common among them? Can we pull those out and design them as things that can be adopted, can be chosen by those who are working, doing the work in the field, and combined in the formula that works there? I think we need to leverage these new scientific concepts that Pam talked about and really think about how they apply in the practical work that we do. And finally, I think we need to continue to do some of this connecting. So to move beyond just the concepts that we've connected, but build in uh, strategies and practices tied to concepts, measures tied to concepts. So we have a kind of integrated system that allows anyone to come along and say, wow, I'm really focused here. What's something I might try? And then what could I do to find out if that was working in my setting? Thank you.